following is a paid political announcement. This November, down-ballot victories are more important than in any past election. Presenting the Get Out and Vote Republican campaign. The purpose is to reach local conservative and Republican voters, to drive them to vote, and to vote down ballot on party lines. Get out and vote in this crucial election year. Vote down ballot on party lines. Get out and vote Republican. I'm Mike Sapricone, candidate for U.S. Senate, and I approve this message. Paid for by Sapricone for Senate. This is More Money with economist Steve Moore. Now, Steve Moore. Welcome back, folks. This is the More Money Show on WABC Radio. We're talking about the economy. We're talking about money. We're talking about politics. We're talking about how you can make more money. And so uh, one of the regulars on this show for the last couple of months has been John McLaughlin. I'd love to bring John on. You all know John. He's one of the premier pollsters in the country. Uh, he has a finger on the pulse of what Americans are thinking, what they're saying, and uh, what's happening with this election. John, thanks again. And I promised I'd only keep you for about 10 minutes for your latest update. But uh, thanks again for taking some time off on a Saturday afternoon. Thank you. And congratulations on your book that's out there with the, uh, the <laughs> thank the you economy. It's a great book. So seriously. Thank you. Well, Donald Trump held it up the other day at his rally and said, everybody's got to get this book. Uh, you know, the uh, Trump economic miracle. So there's a lot of great data in there. Okay, John, um, we uh, this is going to kind of be a speed interview because there's so much I want to ask you about. Yes. But obviously, first of all, I made my point in the, uh, my opening statement for the show was that Trump has big mo right now. And uh, I, I feel it, you know, having been around him a little bit I in going to some of the rallies and going to events around the country. It just feels like there's been a momentum shift. But am I just dreaming this or do you are you seeing that in the polls? No, there's definitely a momentum shift. And uh, uh, I'm, by the way, I'm not used to this. Having worked for Donald Trump in 2016 when they told us there was a Hillary lock. At this right. point in time in 2016, we were down seven or eight <laughs> points in the real clear politics average, losing every battleground state. And then in 2020, remember the Biden blue wave? He was ahead mm-hmm. of us by 10 points today. There were polls mm-hmm. out on Halloween and right before the election. We were down 10, 11 points. Uh, in the national polls, and we were losing every battleground state. And out of a record 160 million votes that were cast in 2020, we lost by only 44,000 votes in three states, 12,000 Arizona, Georgia, and in uh, uh, 20,000 in Wisconsin. So, you know, those two elections at this point in time, I kept arguing we could win a close election, and it was going to be decided by the Electoral College. Mm -hmm. And right now, you still have a very close election, but the national polls are a dead heat, and we're not used to this. Where where we're you know we're in a dead heat in the popular vote. So there is the possibility that Donald Trump could actually win the popular vote if we have another good 17 days. But things can really change because they're volatile in the battleground states, where we are slightly ahead in all the battleground states right now, which would mean that when you go to like the real clear politics average of these media polls, which we're seeing the same thing in the in the campaign's internal polls, we would have 312 electoral votes. We're mm-hmm. only at 270. By the way, if you take the polls outside, you know, if you say, look, all these polls are margin of error, they, you know, we're up by a point here, two points there, et cetera. And the margin of error of these polls is usually three or four percent plus or minus if you take them out we're only at 219 electoral votes and harris is at 215 and there's 104 electoral votes in toss-up just like they were in 2016 and you've got arizona georgia michigan minnesota nevada north carolina pennsylvania wisconsin and the the one electoral vote in the second congressional in nebraska They're yep. all too close to call, but we're on the upside. We're ahead in those areas. So, so mm-hmm. let me ask you this, uh, John. Um, that's a great uh, overview of where the things stand. Thank you. Right, that's coming from John McLaughlin, the expert, the uh, pollster who's who's uh, following this stuff every day. Uh, one of the things that struck me, John, and I don't know if this came from one of your polls or another one, but. Uh, uh, and forgive me if I've got these numbers wrong, but roughly two or three weeks ago, uh, you know, Kamala Harris had a had a positive. Pe- people viewed her positively. I think she was slightly above. I think it was like forty two percent positive and like forty 
points negative. I don't know, remember the exact number, but she was slight positive on her approval rating. I was looking at the latest approval ratings. Now she's da- she her approval rating is actually negative six, uh, right. according to the poll that I saw, which is a big swing. If you look, you know, in just the last few weeks, why do you? But, but are those numbers pretty close to being accurate? And if they are, why do you think that the public has uh, maybe changed their opinion a bit about Kamala Harris? Well, remember they were running a vibe election. You know, it was all about the vibes that she was, she was going to be this right. change candidate. But we now said, you know, look, she's she, she went a, a week ago Monday. She was back on. She was on the View, and she, they said, would you have done anything differently over the last four years right. that you and right. Joe Biden did? And she said, not one thing. Well, and America is yeah. saying, right? She people didn't know where she stood. People really didn't have a focus on her. And from the time she got picked on July twenty first. Until this day, she's getting over ninety yep. percent positive press from the mainstream media. Ninety percent. Yep. No, it's over. You just asked Brent Bozell at the Media Research Center. It's ninety. That nonpartisan. Yes, group, I saw that study. You're right. You're right. I thought it was like eighty-eight percent, but still, <laughs> it's pretty close to ninety percent. And and it's and for Donald Trump, who survived an assassin's bullet, and uh, it's over ninety percent negative from them. Right. So, right. But but the campaign on its own, to Donald Trump's credit, he's he's working tirelessly. He's out hustling her. He's out there doing rallies. He's in the battleground states. He's doing a ton of media. They've hit her from the press. Anything yes. that's anything that could be tough. But we've gotten the message out that if you want to change things, if you want to get the country back in the right direction, if you want a pro growth economy, you have to vote for Donald Trump because she's gonna she, she's gonna let those tax cuts that you help create lapse. It'll be a five trillion dollar tax increase, raising taxes on ninety one percent of all Americans. The, our, our ads in the battleground states say it's up. Mm-hmm. It'll raise taxes twenty six hundred dollars on the average yeah, person. Yep, yep. And and if you want an open border, if you want to still have this crime, if you want to have endless wars, you know that's her. It's all on her. So your opening point that. Trump has a positive job approval among all voters. They may not like his personality. They may not like his style mm-hmm. or his tweets, or, but he was great at the Al Smith dinner the other night. But yeah. but they may not like him personally, but he has a net positive job rating because people said inflation was low. The border was secure. Uh, we weren't in, we were winning. What We beat ISIS. We, we weren't in endless wars. America was safer yeah. and more prosperous under Kamala Harris. They're getting a picture now. You'll have four more years of high inflation, government spending, higher taxes, open borders. Uh, They're getting a picture of who she would really be as president. Yeah. And so I saw this ad. I saw this poll the other day. Again, I don't know if it was yours or someone else's, but it showed uh, it was a large number over uh, over 70 percent said they think the country's headed in the wrong direction. And I know. You know, people are oftentimes just normally pessimistic, but that's a big number. And it's hard to see the incumbent, and let's face it, Kamala is sort of running as the incumbent in this race, winning with a number, with if, if Americans really, if, if, if almost over two thirds of Americans think the country, are you seeing that too, that people are just stressed out? Yes. And, and, but they have to understand she's Joe Biden's vice president. Yeah. They tried to say she was somebody different. And, right. and that she's not Joe Biden. She's she's younger than Joe Biden, but she's she's lockstep totally in the same policy position. Right. Right. So, so I mean, so uh, to, to you and me, here. John, that's so self-evident. But I guess we're, I guess a lot of people still are thinking of her as a kind of separate. I mean, they are they are they are joined at the hip. I mean, she can't name one policy, one policy right. that would be different from what. Joe Biden did. So how can the American people, how can so many people still think that she's going to be different from Biden? I mean, I actually think she's going to be worse, but um, I'm surprised that people still think she's going to be this you know, bright ray of sunshine and that it's turning the page. I mean, turn the page from, from what to what? Right. Well, the difference is, you know, if they don't listen to you on ABC radio, if they don't, <laughs> uh, if they don't watch Fox News or Newsmax or et cetera, they're getting a totally different alternative universe on CNN and MSNBC. Or if there's somebody who doesn't care about politics and tune in late between big tech and big media with their bias, 
Uh, yeah. They're not getting that message. So it's been up to the campaign and Donald Trump to go us to go out, hustle them, which Donald Trump is doing. And and you saw it the other night at the Al Smith dinner. Donald Trump was funny. He was personable. He was yep. humble. And, yep. he, and he was he you know, he was able to get in a room where a lot of those people there were Democrats for New York City. Yes. And he won them over. He was he was and she she insulted Catholics by not coming. And, yeah, I was uh, not there, but we, you know, I, I saw, I watched a lot of it, and I couldn't agree more with you that Trump came across as he, you know, I, you were used the word humble. That's not something we normally associate with Donald Trump, but he was self-effacing, and mm-hmm. you know, I thought you know humor is such a powerful tool in politics, and I was glad to see that Trump, you know, pulled that off so effectively, and I, I could not believe how piss poor. Uh, the the dial it in um, performance by Kamala was couldn't they think of anything funny to say? No, and it, but look, for those of us who know her record, she tried to put a litmus test that she wouldn't allow practicing Catholics to be on the federal court. Yeah, right. You know, I mean, we know what she grilled people for being in the Knights of Columbus, which is a charitable organization. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. Right. But that's how radical she is. So people are seeing she's radical that she would have, you know, she supports transgender surgeries and having taxpayers pay for them. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, she doesn't like Catholics and or, you know, so you're dealing with somebody who's really way out of the mainstream when voters get a focus on that. And, you know, Donald Trump, we've known him for years He's more determined than ever. He's a better candidate than ever. He's an experienced president who will yes. use that experience to do better this term than he did in his last term. I agree. Uh, and by the way, John, the uh, the Wall Street Journal interview, I don't know if you read it, uh, mm-hmm. but um, they, they, they agreed that, you know, even though the journal editorial page has some, you know, policy disagreements, some, some you know, some on pair of severe policy disagreements, they did say, look, this guy knows his stuff. He is ready. Yeah. He is of sound mind. He is, he has the executive experience and they were quite impressed with, um, you know, with again, how he carried himself, how much he knew about the issues. Um, and that's what you want in the chief executive, right? Yes. And he is, he can solve the problems the country's going through right now. He can secure the border. He can, you know, restores to back to low inflation and a yep. pro growth economy. He can keep us safe and secure in a dangerous world. I mean, they tried to put my other client besides Trump, Netanyahu. I've worked for Netanyahu for years. They tried to blow up his house with a drone. Why haven't we shut the satellites down that, mm-hmm. you know, Iran and Hezbollah are using, you know, to, to, to navigate their drones to attack Israel? This is like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, so John, you know, we just have about a minute, minute and a half left. Uh, last question. I think I asked you this the last time you were on, but I'd like to re- ask the question again because that was a couple weeks ago. What what is what is Trump's closing argument? We're getting close to the end here. What does Trump need to do over the next uh, fourteen days or so to seal the deal? For us, for us old timers who uh, used to work for Ronald Reagan, it's very easy. It's like. You know, do you want four more years of the same uh, right. failed policies? Right. Or, or, you know, are you better off today than you were four years ago? Of course not. If you yeah. want to be better off, you have to vote for change and vote for Donald Trump. It's very simple. John, you're the best. Thank you so much. I'd like to I'd love to call on you in a couple of weeks right before the election and get your pre-election uh, forecast on things. Um, that's Sean McLaughlin, one of the great pollsters in America. This is the More Money Show on WABC. We'll be right back. Eden Memorial Chapels understands Jewish funerals can take many forms. Some are very orthodox, while others are more conservative or of a reformed nature. There's no one better in New York or New Jersey. Go to EdenMemorial.com. 